so this tutorial is about uh, slicing a procedural mesh in runtime. So let me show you what I'm gonna do. Um, so if we change this, we can slice them right here, like this too. Or if we want to, yeah. And let's start on. So the um the mesh that you wanna slice must be a BP. I've already created a, a, uh, a blueprint, right click blueprint class, and it should be an actor. Um, give it a name. Um, in this instance, we're gonna just add a cube as a uh, as a mesh for ourselves. You can first add, add a cube and then come here and change the static mesh. Doesn't matter, or you can just drag the mesh into your scene. Um, and then we then add a procedural mesh. Just come here for procedural mesh um, and then go to the go to your static mesh and come here type in CPU and allow CPU access this is important uh, and in the collision I would advise that um, you go ahead and set uh, select this one remove collision and then in the uh, click on this one auto, auto convex collision and then come here and hit apply. It will uh, create a new collision for the mesh, so it will work with no problem for you. And then uh, this mesh should not be visible in the game, so come here and set, uh, set this one out. Then it shouldn't have any collision, so no collision for this one. And that's it. For the procedural mesh, though, uh, the first option we need to set uh, on set is use complex as simple collision. Just uncheck this one, and it must simulate physics. And the collision presets presets should be block all. Uh, and the construction script, not in the event graph. In the construction script, uh, come here, drag this one in, and copy procedural mesh from static mesh component and then the procedural mesh component will be this one so just drag this one in and it must have create collision for it and you can change the LOD index too right now I'm just using the LOD index 0 but if you want to uh, if you for example if you have like a hundred try a hundred K triangles I would recommend you uh, play around a little bit with the LOD creator and have an LOD which is not as bad and then set that LOD in here something like two three I mean it depends on your mesh I'm not gonna explain um go into very detail into that one since we're not talking about that and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. If you are having a little bit of a problem with the collision stuff, just uncheck this one and check it out again and you should be good to go. So the way the uh, first person character is set up in Unreal Engine 5 is a little bit different. What I did, I mean, what they have here is that the, uh, the gun's not in the character's hands. Instead, the gun's around here and the character just goes forward and then grabs the gun. I didn't want that and uh, probably a lot of you guys wouldn't want that too. This tutorial is specifically for those who don't want that, who uh, want the gun to be in the character's um, arms all the time. So let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> First of all, um, you should copy the gun from the, the actor that's placed here. Don't remember the name of this, unfortunately. You just come here. This is the uh, the first person mesh. So you copy the skeletal mesh for the gun, and then you should parent it to grip points. Yeah, just make sure you do that. Um, and then I've uh, added a cube for it to and an arrow. You can just come in here and type in error and add it an error to it as well for ref, uh, for future references. Then um, these are all the same. Yeah, these are the same. 
So the only thing that I've changed, I've created from scratch probably, is that when you uh, left click or the primary action input, it traces a line. So line trace by channel, just type in line trace by channel. Uh, not multiple line trace, line trace by channel. <coughs> and then we're go we are going to get active location. Just type in whatever you see here. Uh, if the code is different inside the library, I will tell you, but it's not. And then add it here, add, yeah, it must be, add to a vector. Okay, so add would do, I guess, yeah. So everything's different in Engine 5. Um, add it to, right now we're using the arrow 5. I told you we're going to use it in the future. Um, so we are getting the world rotation, get forward vector, get forward vector from world rotation, and then multiply it by a thousand, and then add that one into this one, and then we have it here. So let me show you the trace. It's gonna be uh, have it for persistent. So this is the trace we're having right now. Thank you. So, so we are going to break the hit results. Break hit results. Uh, if the action, uh, if the object that's been hit is a procedural mesh component, then it will uh, be true. Then not, it won't. This cast would, wouldn't success. So nothing will really happen. So the code will be stopped in here. But in our case, when we are shooting at this object, which is a procedural um, mesh component, then the code will continue. So let's talk about that. After that, we want it to be sliced. Fortunately for us, there's a function in it. There's a built-in function, slice procedural mesh. So we use that, and the procedural mesh should be the object hit component that's been hit by this line trace. So we use that one. How the plane position should be? Well, the position is the location of the hit. That's obvious kind of. But the plane normal. So the plane normal is this one. We want it to be sliced like this or like this or in any other angle. I mean, I'm not talking about any other angles. You could make that work. So, I mean, I'm going to explain about it. You could make it work, but you literally want a, um, the system to work that way. So what we're going to do, as I told you, there's a cube here. We just uh, parented it to this little mesh around here. So when this uh, changes rotation, the, the plane normal will change rotation because we are using this cube as a reference. So in, in that case, we're just getting up vector. So it's just get up vector, I suppose that. Uh, and this will be the plane normal we are going to use. Oh, and the material should be changed as well. So whatever you're using for the material in here should be used for the inside. Or if you're planning to use a different material, you can. Uh, for the inside, you can use that as well. Uh, and create a new section for cathode. So in our cases, the precision mesh is simulating physics. Okay, remember we've changed it here. But just in case, you can just go ahead and set simulate physics to true and then add some impulse to it because without it, it wouldn't, I mean, it works kind of, I mean, it just works, yeah, but you can't see it. It is working, but you can't see it. Look, it is working, but since there's no impulse into it, so nothing works really. So we need that impulse, we need it to be visual. So the procedural mesh will be getting some impulse. In my case, everything's 200. Um, and for changing the value of changing the rotation of this one. So what I did is pretty simple. If you are using mouse wheel up, add relative uh, rotation to the cube. So how much will the rotation be? Well, let's and let's give it that way. Um, let's 
so we are just adding some rotation into it you have two options one is set relative rotation set relative rotation and then uh, get the rotation of this one like this break it into um, floats rotation to floats and then use those one of those floats to uh, and then you have to rebuild break rotator get rotation get uh, relative rotation and then right click uh, split struck pin and then you want to do something into them and then um, make rotator and then you just do whatever you want to do with it um, but in my case I found out that the add relative rotation would work better just a little bit better so if I uh, use the mouse wheel up it will add 90 degrees to the y-axis if I use mouse wheel down, it will add minus 90 degrees in the y-axis, which, I mean, something, we can use 45. It would work with 45 as well, so it doesn't really change things much. Yeah. So, it works with pretty much any other angle. So. Um, and that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, if you couldn't make it work, make sure you um, ask it in the comment section. And if it did help you, please hit that like button. And I hope I wish you a great day. Bye.